This budget was supposed to be about taking Britain forward over calm economic waters. Instead, it's going to be all about this. The black hole in the Chancellor's accounts. For the past eight years, Britain's public finances have looked a little bit like this, a vast vortex at the heart of government sucking money out of its coffers. Now, George Osborne was rather hoping that this was going to dry up and he'd be left with a healthy balance sheet, which is why he devised himself two hard fiscal rules. The first is that the national debt must fall every year as a percentage of GDP. The second is the government needs to have a surplus, in other words, to collect more tax each year than it spends by 2019-20. But with the economy weakening, the boffins working here at the Treasury are going to find it far more difficult to meet those rules than back in the autumn. First, the national debt might actually still be rising. He's pledged to cut debt as a share of our economy every year going forwards. And in principle, there are good reasons to want to do that. But in practice, he's been aiming to do it really just driven because of his selling off of assets. And that's pretty much cheating the spirit of that rule. And it now looks like some of those asset sales won't go ahead. And if that's the case, he might end up breaking the actual practice of the rule as well as the spirit of it. Second, the surplus rule doesn't look quite so easy, according to the man who actually helped write it. Until last year, Rupert Harrison worked here as the Chancellor's Chief of Staff. He's given himself a little bit of wiggle room to start with, albeit £10 billion in five years' time is not that much. Uh, in terms of what he can do to achieve that, you know, there are no, there's no third way in a, way, in a sense. Either you're going to put up taxes or you're going to cut spending. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, in the budget and, and the autumn statement since the election, there's been a, a bit of both. I would expect that to continue. To understand why, consider what's happening here in Sheffield. For centuries, this is where the world came for steel. Today, these mills are under permanent threat in the face of Chinese competition and collapsing metal prices. This is pretty much smack bang in the middle of the Chancellor's northern powerhouse, halfway between Sheffield and Manchester. And everywhere you look, there are reminders of what used to make Britain great. You've got the steel mills, the industrial heartlands. This reservoir was actually used by the dam busters for their practice flights. But for all of the talk, the economy here is still struggling and wages are still stagnant. Weak wages mean weak tax revenues. Falling share prices mean falling capital gains tax. And with the EU referendum on the horizon, the Chancellor is desperate not to do anything to alienate voters this week. So his hands are tied. This was supposed to be a bold budget about reshaping Britain. Instead, it's likely to be dominated by worries about money still escaping down the plug hole. Ed Conway, Sky News.